It was a love story and also a tragedy, and unfortunately, those things go hand in hand a little too often. I'm John Rethlin with my review of Dark Side of the Ring Season 1, Episode 1, The Match Made in Heaven. After popular demand, there were a lot of people on Twitter that got at me and wanted me to go back and review every single episode of Dark Side of the Ring Season 1. And since there are only six episodes, why the hell not? Uh, season 2, those reviews did really goddamn well, so I want to go back and watch these. And I have seen them before, but I was like, alright, if people want me to review them, why the fuck not? Also, this made me angry because I remembered vividly how much I fucking hate Lex Luger and how much Lex Luger deserves a fucking rot for what he did. So I'm not going to go over every single thing in fine detail, but I will hit the high spots on this. But if you have not seen Dark Side of the Ring Season 1 or Season 2, what are you waiting for? Get out there. If you have a Hulu subscription, they're on there. And it's best to start at Season 1. You get Dutch Mantel doing the narration for Season 1 and Jericho doing the narration for Season 2. Um, I will say this was the most tolerable that Bruce Pritchard was, like, you know, like, in interviews of any kind, even though he did say that the Booker T. Triple H storyline wasn't a racist storyline, the stupid, dumb son of a bitch that he is, never belonged in wrestling. That being said, he did offer some good insight because he worked closely with Randy from the early parts of his career when, you know, knew about him and then worked with him in WWE. Uh, he says, if you were to package intensity or try to package intensity, electricity, and explosivity, um, you know, as, m as much as that doesn't sound like a word, actually is a word, into a package, it would be Macho Man Randy Savage. And that's true. Randy Savage is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. He's in my top three. It's either Eddie, Randy, and Brett at the top, or it's uh, Randy, Eddie, and Brett at the top. Brett's always at the top, by the way, but Randy's in the top three. Because if it wasn't for Randy Savage, I don't know if I would have loved wrestling as much as I did. Now, obviously, Hulk Hogan is somebody that I, you know, got, that I was drawn to right away. Hogan and uh, Roddy Piper and Warsell score first wrestling event I watched. But just being able to see Randy Savage, like, right, you know, because he came in right at the end of that year from, you know, Memphis, from ICW and stuff like that, you know. And then when they did the merge, the Continental Wrestling Association, he did... He did a lot of rounds on a lot of, you know, smaller promotions, even though he was good in Memphis. Seeing him in WWE, just being able to see what he could do, you knew this guy was the best in the world. I mean, he truly, well, for a long time, he was. Even as intense as he was, and I still hold that if Randy Savage had, I still hold to this, uh, you know, this belief, that if Randy Savage had been given the ball like Hulk Hogan, and had been given the championship for a few years, not just one year, but a few years, he could have carried the ball just as well as Hulk Hogan did. Now, whether it would have been at its height during the four years like Hogan, you know, when he had the championship is debatable. But I'm talking after that. If they had given it to Randy, you know, from 88, you know, Mania 4 on to, you know, like, say, 1991, he would have lost the championship and, you know, then retired. That would have been one thing. And I think he could have absolutely carried it because people were getting sick of Hogan by that point. But anyway, uh, Savage and Liz, you know, they... Uh, you know, were the first, you know, as far as, like, major couple of professional wrestling, and they were the best. They truly were. Uh, Pritchard talks more about, you know, Savage's upbringing, second generation, uh, you know, Angelo Poffo. I will always remember the Bobby Heenan line when Angelo Poffo was at Bash at the Beach in 95. You know, that's, he's been here all day. His cane's been stuck in the sand. He's been going around a circle. And Bobby Heenan, God forbid. I hope they do a dark side of the ring about Bobby Heenan, not that Bobby Heenan was, you know, a bad person, but just talking about, like, the stuff that he went through. Because you could do a two-part episode just on that. Bobby Heenan was fucking fantastic. <laughs> um, Randy played crazy really well. We get Lanny Poffo, who, yes, is Randy's brother, has some other issues that will need to be discussed on a future, you know, video. But it just Google Lanny Poffo controversy, you'll know what I mean. I think him and Pat Patterson have a little bit more in common with how they deal with the ring crew and with people, if you know what I mean. Um, talk about Randy growing up and said, would this be a bad time to mention that Randy was a bedwetter? Um, Linda Balea, you know, the gold digging tramp that used to be married to Hulk Hogan, the known racist grandpa. And no, I don't like Linda Hogan, Linda Balea, the former Linda Balea, you know, the one that basically would have not ever gotten any riches had she not married Hogan. As much as I knock Hulk... At least Hulk earned his money. What did Linda ever fucking earn? She didn't fucking earn anything. Bunch of plastic surgery. That's about fucking it. Uh, but then again, Hogan is a racist grandpa, so I really don't feel bad for him. So, you know, Scott Holden talked about how they met. It's like, I believe Liz was working as a receptionist at a gym. It's like, you, your eyes are so red. And then Randy said, you should see him from this side. 
And Scott's like, that's what got it, Nimbers. So now, you know, took a little bit more than that. And they had a whirlwind romance. They really did. Um, he wanted Liz on the road with him. Uh, well, I mean, Randy did, not Bruce. Maybe Bruce did. I don't know. Bruce seems like a bit of a creep like that. But uh, Jimmy Hart even talks about, you know, Randy coming up to WWE, you know, in 1985, like I mentioned. And we get some good stuff there. I really enjoyed hearing from Jimmy Hart, one of my favorite managers of all time. Top three, I would say. Uh, Bobby Heenan is number one, but Jimmy Hart, it's often forgotten about just how great he was, and especially in Memphis. His, whether I'm a big, the biggest Memphis fan or not, Jimmy Hart in Memphis, he really did make that. He really did make the most of that. Um, and they wanted you to love Elizabeth, and hey, Randy, and they did. I mean, and it worked. It fucking worked. And archival footage of promos, matches, and stuff like that leading up to Mania 3. Jake Roberts talks about it. You know, Jake Roberts, when he was uh, much cleaner by this point, thankfully... Um, the, you know, the fact that it was the largest, you know, uh, crowd to, to attend a wrestling event and everything out, you know, in a stadium at that point it may have been true, but it wasn't 93,173, it's more like 76, 78,000. Still impressive, but it wasn't 93,000. Vince McMahon likes to inflate the numbers a little bit. So, Linda then shows pics of a couple of happier times. Randy kept her a bit too close, and not Linda, but Liz. Lizda, if you will. Um, and that led to some fractures later because Liz, even though Liz and Randy did love each other, and I mean, that tr you truly could tell they loved each other, he kept her too close. And that's the one thing I got to say about Randy is that Randy was just a little bit too off about that. I mean, yes, I wear this shirt. Yes, he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I'm not saying the man didn't have his demons, but goddamn, Liz was somebody that needed to, you know, spread her wings and, you know, go out and stuff like that and hang out with friends. And while Randy understood she needed friends, he felt that she should be, you know, there for him. And I understand that, but at the same time, it was not necessarily the best thing, you know, for their long-term relationship. Mega Power stories all over jealousy and Liz. You got lust in your eyes for Elizabeth. Sorry to any Randy Savage fr uh, fans. I'm very sorry for that impression. Uh, he went with Bischoff. Uh, had some good insight here. Randy wanted to keep her away from the boys, and I really don't blame him. Jake Roberts talks about pranks were played. Um, he wanted, Liz took time off the road, Macho Man, or Macho King Randy Savage was born, we get the Mania 7, retirement match with Warrior, fuck Ultimate Warrior, I'm glad he's dead by the way, piece of shit, queering doesn't make the world work, was something that he said, and he also didn't apologize for breaking Bobby Heenan's neck, and the whole cancer thing, and stuff like that, so yeah, Warrior deserved a freaking rot for what he did, and then, you know, we get the wedding, we get the Jake Roberts feud, well, maybe the snake should bite you instead, um, you know, and the snake spot was brutal, scary, uh, Liz wanted to leave. She stays with Linda while Terry, I believe, is filming. It's either Thunder in Paradise or something. Um, and Randy was angry. He confronted Linda, went out with Hulk. Basically, this whole idea of Liz finding another guy, like it fractured the relationship with Hulk. You know, the friendship and everything. No, you know, Liz, or Randy thought that that was, you know, that Hulk knew about it. And Jimmy's like, I knew Hulk for 39 years. And he Hulk had nothing to do with it. Yeah, Hulk's never slept with another man's wife on camera. And then said the N-word repeatedly when people have forgotten. Or people wanted to say, oh, he was at a dark place. Yeah, being in a dark place and depressed makes you be racist. That's not how that fucking works, you goddamn Hulk defenders. Sorry if you guys are friends of mine, but you can forgive him if you want. But no, there's no defending that. And then the split change, Randy. He goes to WCW soon after. Bishop talks about the deal. Says, yeah, Randy did cost quite. Uh, did cost a fortune. He also came with a seven hundred fifty grand a year deal with Slim Jim. Slim Jim didn't want to change Randy's character. Randy, even though he was divorcing from Liz and Liz met another guy and stuff like that, Randy got her a contract for two hundred fifty grand a year. She barely had to appear on camera. She was the bad guy. He was the uh, good guy. Uh, well, you know, she was a heel, he was a baby face, and, you know, roles reversed and stuff like that. And Liz, I gotta say, this Liz aged like a goddamn fine wine. She fucking looked great at that point. Uh, she was great in uh, the NWO, even though they really didn't have anything for her. And she had to wrestle in 2000. Remember that bullshit? Remember that? Do you do you remember when they actually had Liz wrestle? God damn it, Vince Russo, you piece of shit. Um, you know, Lex, Lex relationship is discussed. And this is right where I really started to get angry. I almost turned as purple as his shirt the first time I watched this. Since I've seen it before, I didn't quite get as angry, but Lex Luger is one of the biggest pieces of shit ever. And the fact that, yeah, oh, he went on Bischoff's podcast and talked about this stuff and everything years after. I still don't think he was entirely truthful because I believe he had everything to do with Liz passing away. And I'm not saying Liz didn't make her choices, but yeah, the pills, the booze, um, Lex uh, had Liz living in the same complex that his wife, that him and his wife lived in. Bold. 
fold, you dumb son of a bitch. Um, Bischoff said that he resented Lex, um, you know, and Lex was even on his podcast. And, you know, he had to come clean. We get voice recording. We get voice, you know, pieces of Lex talking about that and everything. It was fucking trash. The 911 calls got leaked. Lex knew she was dying and did nothing for it. And I'm not saying that if somebody's dying in front of you, you won't panic. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I've never had that happen. Hopefully I never had that happen. I think Lex knew what was happening. He just didn't care. He wanted to manipulate and get something out of Liz. And then once she was no longer useful to him, that's when, you know, he was like, oh, well, you know, I'm trying everything and stuff like that. Judging by that 911 call, no, he fucking didn't. And maybe if Lex wasn't so pilled and roided up like that, maybe he would have actually cared. Maybe if he had a goddamn soul. Um, and we get put it in, you know, Liz died on May, in May of 2003, early May of 2003, we get footage of Savage talking about Liz's death. They hadn't spoken in a while, um, but that he felt, he felt that they parted his friends and that he felt bad for her family. Then he marries, uh, marries someone new and, you know, an old flame, I believe it was a flame that he had back in high school or college. And then he dies in a uh, car accident. Lanny Poffo goes to the tree that Randy had hit died, the wife, uh, wife survived, was widow, um, but Randy didn't, he had a heart attack, and Randy's death really hit me hard, I was actually driving on the freeway back when I, like, you know, driving back from somewhere, I don't remember where, I think it was an insurance appointment, and I nearly crashed my car on the freeway going 70, because I heard about that, and it hit a lot of people hard, it really did, um, Randy's, de Randy's death hit me hard, almost as hard as I would say Eddie's, um, Randy at least was about 60, I mean, yes, it seemed like he still had a lot more left to, um, you know, to uh, give, but he at least had lived most of his life. He had gotten right. Eddie passed away at age 38, but just, that was something that really hit me hard. And this is an episode, a great way to kick off Dark Side of the Ring. Hell of a way. And they talk about their relationship and everything. You want to remember lives with Randy, not with somebody else. And it truly was a match made in heaven, even if there was a lot of fractures behind the scenes. Let me know what you guys think. Do you want me to continue to review the rest of these? Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Retlin. I'll see you soon.